Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation performance on this GTX 1650 powered mini PC. I recently did a review on this if you're interested in checking out how it performs with real PC games. I'll leave a link for that video in the description. But overall, this thing has been absolutely amazing. And basically what we have here is a super small form factor gaming PC powered by a 9th gen i7 CPU and a GTX 1650 GPU. Now I picked mine up bare bones, $580 ship, didn't come with storage, didn't come with RAM. I added 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2666 and a 512 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. Now they do offer a few different variants from a 9th gen i5 all the way up to a 9th gen i9, but I went mid-range with it and chose the i7 version. But as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny and it actually puts out some really good performance. So before we jump right into some emulation testing, I just want to give you a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, we have the i7-9750H, 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 2.6 GHz with the turbo up to 4.5. We have a GTX 1650 with 4GB of GDDR5, plus we have those UHD 630 graphics built in if you want to do something lower end. I've added 16GB of RAM to this, and it's running Windows 10 Pro. So for this video, we're just going to be testing out some emulation from Sega Saturn all the way up to PS3 to see how this thing performs. But if you're interested in seeing how this thing performs with real PC games, definitely check out my initial video. But with all that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So first on the list, we have Sega Saturn using RetroArch and the Yobase and Shiro Core. With each one of these games, you will see the name of the system, the name of the emulator. I'll also have some box art on screen so you know what game's playing at any given time. And I have Afterburner running up in the top left hand corner so we can see what's going on with everything. What you're seeing now is the Yobase and Shiro Core, but I also tested the Beetle Core and it works just as well. We definitely have enough CPU power. Next up, PSP, it's going to run great. As long as the game's compatible with the emulator, you'll have no trouble running it. Even the harder ones to run, like Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta. Here we have Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition, which is actually a really hard game to run, and we're at 5x resolution with the Vulcan back end. I also tested DX11 and OpenGL. They perform just as well. Moving over to GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, Vulcan back in, upscale to 4K, one of the harder ones to run, F-Zero GX, and we're running at full speed. I also tested Automodalista, which is kind of my go-to, runs just fine at 4K. And going into this, I was pretty sure we wouldn't have any issues. This emulator has come a long way in the last few years, and the Dolphin developers have done an amazing job. Along with GameCube, we also have 4K Wii emulation. When I initially started testing this, out of the box it was set at DirectX 11 and it worked really well, but uh, I just kind of wanted to swap over to Vulcan, and as you can see, we're still getting great performance. Here we are with PC SX2 DirectX 11 back end, and with Ratchet and Clank going commando here, I was able to take it up to 4K, but it's not going to do all PS2 games at 4K because the next one I tested, I did have to drop it down to 2K, but in the end, it's still doing an amazing job. And here's that one I had to drop down to 2K, Gran Turismo 4. Original Xbox emulation has come a long way in the last few years. We're using CXBX Reloaded, upscaled to 1080p, Jet Set Radio Future, running at 60. I also tested the original Xbox version of DOA3. Getting great performance here at 1080p, but every once in a while I do notice some hiccups, and it really comes down to the emulator itself. Taking it up to PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, upscaled to 1080p, Tekken 6 here, looking great, running just fine. I knew we wouldn't have any issues with this particular game, 
It seems a bit easier to run than others, but I also tested two more PS3 games just to make sure. Finally, for PS3, we have Skate 3. This is kind of my go-to test. It's just a really hard one to emulate. And even out here in the open with lots of people walking around, we're running at full speed. It's doing a really great job with this. Also threw in a little bit of Wii U emulation using SimU, Vulcan back in, Async shaders, upscaled to 1080p, Breath of the Wild, running at 30. I did try this at 60, but I can only achieve around 57 FPS and it does dip down from there. So locking this at 30 is really the way to go. I tested one more here with the SimU emulator. Still using those async shaders with the Vulcan back end, upscaled to 1080p. Looking great here and performance is amazing. And finally, for this video, we have some Xbox 360 emulation using Xenia. There have been recent updates to this emulator that allows it to perform much better on NVIDIA GPUs. And since we have that GTX 1650, we can even do Forza 2 at full speed. This is really awesome. And in the past, I have tested this on another machine with a Ryzen CPU and a 1650. We achieved a little less performance, but I think we're seeing that performance bump here due to the new updates to the emulator. And just because I was here, I figured I'd test out Red Dead Redemption. I didn't unlock it at 60 or anything like that. I wanted to see if we could at least run this at 30. And when there's lots of stuff on screen, you can see that it dips down quite a bit. So overall, this has turned out to be an awesome little mini PC for gaming, and as you saw in this video, it dubs as a great little emulation device. If you're interested in learning more about this little PC, definitely check out that first video I made. I'll leave a link for it in the description. We did an unboxing, a hardware overview, we ran some benchmarks, and tested out some PC games. This is definitely a solid little small form factor gaming machine, and if you're interested in picking one up, I'll leave a few links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this machine, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.